Anvil Aerospace. Founded in 2772, Anvil specializes in militaristic and support type vehicles. With dogfighters such as the Arrow and F-7A to exploration spearheads such as the Carrick, Anvil has been delivering reliable military-grade equipment to the UEE Navy for nearly two centuries. With such a long history, it gives us a clear chance to look at ship evolution. Today, we dive into the F-Series of ships by Anvil. The F-7C is a civilian variant of the F-7A Hornet Space Superiority Fighter by Anvil Aerospace. Introduced in 2923 after the F-7A had a distinguished period of service to the United Empire of Earth Navy. The F-7C was the first ship released by Anvil Aerospace for the civilian use. To keep the ship in compliance with the UEE military secrecy laws, Anvil replaced 60% of the existing internal hardware and systems from the F-7A, but made no changes to the frame. Anvil saw a significant spike in sales after the F-7C's debut, leading to the company's plan for future civilian additions to its ship catalog. To the enemy, it's a weapon never to be underestimated. To allies, it's a savior. Legendary fighter pilot Arya Riley once said, Give me a fully loaded Hornet and I'll shake the gates of heaven. Classified as a medium single seat fighter, the Hornet is extremely versatile. With a default loadout of two size 3 Panther laser repeaters and a large storage box in its center size 5 ball mount, the Hornet starts out being able to dogfight and clear bunkers all in one outing. For advanced dogfighters, you can mount a single size 3 to the nose of the ship or two size 1s on a nose mounted turret. The size 5 ball mount is also capable of being replaced by a ball turret holding two size 2s or mount a gimbal puck that can hold one size 4. By default, it also comes with four size 2 and four size 1 missiles. Component-wise, the Hornet comes with two size 1 shields, one size 1 power plant, and two size 1 coolers. To fully utilize the ship's hardpoints with laser weapons, it's in a desperate need of an upgrade from its stock setup. The success of the F-7C to the public was so immense that in 2946, it spawned three variants of the base model. The variants that grew from the standard F-7C are the F-7CS Hornet Ghost, the F-7CR Hornet Tracker, and the iconic F-7CM Super Hornet. Comparing the standard Hornet to the Ghost and Tracker variants, there's a minimal difference. When it comes to speed and maneuverability, the standard and the Ghost are identical. The Tracker, however, has a slightly increased SCM speed with a bit of maneuverability cost. The components of these three brothers all stay the same in numbers and size. The real difference comes down to their function and an intended purpose. The Ghost comes with a stealth coating, resulting in an epic black paint job. The Ghost also comes with a Ghost module and its center size 5 ball mount. With stealth not being fully implemented as of yet, the Ghost almost feels like a skinned version of the F7C. The Tracker also comes with a slightly different paint job. In addition to paint, it also comes with a Willis Op long look radar and its center size 5 ball mount. Scanning and scouting are not fully worked out yet and have failed to see a true game loop in the Persistent Universe at this time. With ships like the Drake Cutter Scout releasing this year, I'm hoping that scanning and scouting will see an early gameplay loop sometime in the next year. Scouting missions could be something like following ships while you can scan them and not yet be detected, or scanning ships to bring back data about their current location and cargo. It's really up to CIG to bring us a well-rounded gameplay loop for ships capable of tracking, scanning, and fighting. Finishing up on the variations, Anvil Aerospace released the F-7CM Super Hornet. Designed to mirror the military F-7A Hornet as closely as possible while using equipment and materials available to the civilian market. The F-7CM's overall modularity is reduced by the return of a military-style turret capable of being used by co-pilot. In lore, Super Hornets are produced in lower numbers than the standard models and are popular among mercenaries and bounty hunters. That brings us up to today. Though released in 2933, the Pride of Anvil, the F-8C Lightning, was just available for purchase to the majority of the public in 2953. Much like the Hornet and many other Anvil ships, the Lightning follows a similar design principle. All Anvil ships, from the Arrow to the F-8 and even the Carrick, have design hints letting those who come into contact know this is an Anvil ship. Large air intakes, vents, and an iconic circle design somewhere near the core of the ship have all remained in their ship production. It's these features that remain part of the Anvil spirit and allow the reputation of the Anvil aerospace to strike fear in their enemies. The F-8 Lightning platform is a next generation, single seat heavy fighter developed for the United Empire of Earth Navy. 
Built as the successor to the F-7 Hornet currently utilized by the UEE military, the F-8 was specifically designed to match the latest VanDuel fighters. It is more maneuverable and heavily armed than its predecessor. It was made available in extremely limited numbers to the civilian market. In game today, it's obtainable via Praktorian level concierge or a recent golden ticket event that went down in the PU. Compared to its older counterpart, the F-8 is superior in almost every category. Increasing in size from a medium to a heavy fighter is its largest downside. The F-8 is nearly 2.5 meters longer and 2.5 meters wider than its standard F-7. The F-7 Super Hornet, however, matches the F-8 in size and even comes in a half meter longer. Component-wise, the F-8 comes with two size 1 coolers, one size 2 power plant, and two size 2 shields. The massive jump in shielding and power makes the F-8 come by default ready to put up a fight and tank it at the same time compared to its older counterpart. Armament wise, the default loadout of the F-8 rips. Four gambled size 2 laser repeaters and four additional ballistic cannons, two size 2 and two size 3. Also equipped with eight missiles that are size 2, the laser repeaters make light work of small to medium ships while the cannons make it easy to take down larger prey such as Connies and Corsairs on those higher risk threat bounties. The evolution of style and maneuverability are apparent in the design changes from the F-7 to F-8 series of ships. With the increased threat of the Vanduul and their unique style of ship combat, armor and plating were added to the design to protect the pilot from ships such as the Blade, Glaive, and Scythe. Vandal ships which have been known to use their sharp edges to cut through ships rather than shoot them down directly. To keep up with the Vanduul threat, Anvil upgraded the F-8 with two additional main thrusters, two retro thrusters, and four additional maneuvering thrusters when compared to its F-7 counterpart. The maneuverability of the F-8 is truly outclassed in the medium to large fighters. With so many thrusters, it even rivals light fighters. As a whole, Anvil Aerospace has been at the forefront of ship combat and development for years and will likely continue to do so for years to come creating the latest and greatest ships for the UEE, striking fears into the enemies of man and shaking the gates of heaven itself. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe for more Star Citizen content. If you're just getting into Star Citizen, feel free to use my referral code down below or use a friend's code. Just don't miss out on that sweet Alpha UEC. Gray Fox, going dark.